Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Kevin Alves about Yellow Jackets on Showtime. You also, of course, recognize him as Javi in Netflix's Lock and Key. Welcome back to the show, sir. It's good to see you. Yeah, man, it's really good to see you again. It's been a little bit. It's been a little bit. So it's interesting because, you know, we interviewed you for Lock and Key like the first time you were on the show. And then we did that Instagram live. And this is so technically, this is like your third time on the show, basically. Yeah. So do I have to get you anything? Like you're part of the three timers club. Yeah, this is like, uh, I, it's in the mail, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 nego- we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, I'm so happy for you. You know, Yellow Jackets on Showtime. I love this show so much. So much arc with a lot of characters, specifically with your character. My question for you with Travis is obviously, you know, you read the scripts and you kind of know what's happening a little bit. How far in advance did you know what was to come with this character? Um, that's actually really funny because, you know, a lot of times shows are pretty like quiet about things and then sometimes they're really open. Uh, in this case, first of all, I just have to point out that the EPs and the writers and the creative team on this show has to be my favorite team that I've ever worked with. And I'll give you my first reason right from the get go. After I booked the role, um, I got messages from both the director of episode two and then, um, the whole EP team and they all sat down and wanted to have a zoom meeting with me. So I got to sit down with, you know, Jonathan, Ashley, Bart, Drew, um, and then Jamie, and we all sat down and they were so great. Cause they just turned to me and they said, you know, what are your questions? What do you want to know? This is what you have so far. You have the first script. What do you want to know what's going on? And, and they really gave us a lot of ownership as actors to decide. Cause some actors don't want to know what happens. Some do. And so I remember what I asked, um, I had two questions. I said, you know, I don't need to know anything that he's going to do in the future, but I'd love to know anything that has happened to him in the past yeah. that informs what he's going to do in the future. Of course. Because yeah. that's going to come through in the work. Um, and so that was a big one. And so we had a small conversation about his past and obviously his relationship with his father and his family dynamics. Um, and then there was one more thing I wanted to know, and I still I won't give you the answer that they gave me. I'll just give you the question uh, that I asked because at this time I'd only seen scenes from episode four and episode two. Yeah. Um, I'd seen a couple scenes, and so I asked them. I said, "Okay, you know, I want to create the right arc for this character. So is he a character who is kind of, you know, rude and and grungy, but gonna be redemptive? Like or misunderstood." misunderstood at the moment or is he a character that is just at the tip of his iceberg of self-destruction yeah and how and where which which direction are we going to go with him through the season um, because i didn't want to start too far or too little depending on what happened and yeah. which way we we're going we didn't want to spoon feed the audiences we wanted to give them a three-dimensional character that that they could grow with or watch you know go in another direction and and we were i was really really um you know, I was really curious to understand that. And, and they just did such a great job at helping me understand yeah. where Travis was going so that we could tell as honest of a story of a, a, a boy in the 90s. And that's what we have to remember sometimes. I always tell everyone when they ask me about him because, you know, he is someone that people look at and go, wow, I dislike him so much. And the thing is, I always remind everyone, I'm like, this is a boy in the 90s he's not in 20 am i biased because we're friends in real life that like i don't really like dislike the character that much because like i don't think <laughs> i don't and, know uh, like yeah but like it's funny you say like the misunderstood he's misunderstood i feel like yeah that's a big one you know what i mean he's well, misunderstood he doesn't, have, he doesn't know how to cope he's, but a lot of the characters that you see that are on like from this plane crash on the team a lot of them are misunderstood a lot of them have a lot of layers did you notice um, when you were kind of making this show that basically, you know, your, ca- your, your character, other characters that are on the team, the layers and the kind of dynamics and the arc of everyone is 
also like packed, but everyone's different. Like all the characters have kind of different things and different growing kind of paths with their arc. Have you, did you notice that as well? Yeah. And I think, you know, first that's, that's a tip of the hat to Ashley and Bart yeah. and the whole writing team, everyone else involved because mm -hmm. they wanted to create like human beings, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I think that was huge, but I think, a massive reason that this was possible that these stories were so possible to tell and be so three-dimensional is I just can't think of a more talented group of actors and actresses uh, that I that I've worked with uh, as a whole like this is an ensemble cast so it's a big group right you know you get small groups but all of the people working on this show they're all so talented as performers and uh, and so it was just it's easy to give them layers you we could give them uh, you know uh, a jingle and they could probably give us layers <laughs> acting it. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. My other question too has to do with one of my favorite things about content these days is the genre bending. I don't, I love the fact that we're not kind of staying in one box. I love that you have comedies that have like scary moments in them and vice versa all the time. Now it's kind of like one of my favorite things. This is a genre bending show. There's so much kind of happening in this show. When do you as an actor, Kevin Alves as a storyteller playing Travis, when do you come to realize that you're working on a genre bending show? Is it when you're making it? Is it when it's kind of, Oh, episode by episode like when does that kind of sink in for you i'm curious about that oh i i i'll be honest i felt it when i read the first pilot wow oh, it was like i read it and i went oh this has got so much happening yeah. like there's just there's so many layers anyone who watches the pilot i, I arguably i think it's one of the best pilots i've ever seen and i'm in it so for about good. one second so it's not biased in that sense oh yeah um, it's true <laughs> it's, it's watching it's just watching just yeah i, I thought there were so many layers mm -hmm. um right from the get-go and um but when we're making it it became real like yeah. when we were when we were making it and realizing that it was so you know twisted and that creatively you had directors coming in and moving you into angles that you didn't imagine it happening and changing the pace of the scene in ways you didn't imagine it happening right away and and that was so beautiful because it felt like every episode we were finding new new genres to go into well, it's, it's not spoilers but it just it's just like because it's funny because we talked about it you know what i mean and like we we strategized this interview time wise because we wanted hmm. you know enough episodes to be out and everything yeah but it's just throwing curveballs like you can't even like people have theories and kind of ideas but like you watch an episode and you find out things about characters and then you're like wait a second what i thought about before this one like that doesn't work anymore like, I, like after one episode you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really uh, going it's hard to do like, theories for this uh, for this show. Oh it's yeah, hard. reading the Reddit forums is <laughs> the most entertaining thing I've ever done in my life, and I've never gone on Reddit before until this show because then I got to see all these theories, and it's pretty spectacular to see where people feel like it's going. Yeah, um, and where we know it's going, mm -hmm. and so that's super fun. Um, yeah, I was really happy that we got to do this interview now because first of all, season two, let's go. Congratulations, uh, man. That's awesome. You're, you. uh, you're, you're strategic about that. You also like postponed our live to wait for Lock and Key's announcement for season two as well. Yeah, yeah it's too good. So season two, let's go. You're but a very also, strategic person with stuff. I, I know. It's, it's amazing, man. I admire it. Seriously. Thank you. I hope I was strategic in getting to work on this show too because it was doing pretty uh, – it's yeah. funny we said it before like obviously mutual friend of ours is jesse camacho played doug brazel yeah. in lock and key but most importantly is you know the host and creator of the jesse camacho show starring jesse camacho which yeah. you have reoccurred on one of the greatest yes. new shows on tv um he told me about you know they can't say anything right like but you know he's like i think kevin might have booked something i'm not sure but i think he might have booked something pretty cool that yeah. <laughs> you're gonna wanna he's gonna probably you're probably going to interview him again soon. And it's kind of, it, it excites me because one, you're my friend. So I become happy for you. Right. Thanks. Naturally. Uh -huh. But then it's like, what is it? Like, like what <laughs> <What's> is it? <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, thank you so much. And, yeah. and honestly, likewise, like seeing how much pop Turner has grown. And since the first time that we, we got oh, to yeah. talk and, so now it's pretty cool and uh, it's awesome to see good things happening and good people. I, I really appreciate it, man. No, it's, it's so cool. It's just also, can we just talk maybe because it's the nineties, just, can we talk about like how good yellow jackets looks like cinematography wise, man? Like it's unreal. Well, yeah, we had, um, 
we had Kim and Trevor as our DOPs and, and they got to alternate episodes. And I just, I was in awe watching them set things up all the time. Yeah. And just like, you know, you're doing a scene and you know that things are set up really cool. And then whenever I got to actually go back, especially in episode nine, I got to go and see quite a bit of, like as the season got later, we got to just mm-hmm. see a little bit more and I got to see some of the stuff that we were doing and, in the tent. And I was just like, whoa, this is what it actually looks like after, mm-hmm. after, it goes through the filters and everything. It's it, they were so creative and and really congruent all the way through the season. Like yeah. they worked together, I think, really well to create 100%. something that looked the same. So I know. do have a storyline kind of question for you. Again, no mm-hmm. spoilers, but I'm just curious about it. So, plane crash. Obviously, you know, a lot of people that are like watching this interview right now, though, like they watch Yellow Jackets because I've had I did an interview with Jane yeah. Whitup, which you actually facilitated and recommended me talking to her, which was awesome. But like people kept asking me, like, are there any more Yellow Jackets interviews coming? Like people are loving it right now. So it's not a spoiler, but more like, you know, they're in a very vulnerable state of mind. Everyone um, from that plane crash right now, everyone's very hypersensitive. A lot of people don't really know what's going on. They're trying to kind of figure out their different roles in this little kind of village that they have to be part of right now. You know what I mean? Um, What do you kind of think about the relationships and the tensions between all the people kind of on this plane, like from this plane crash in terms of, you know, little things will set certain characters off certain kind of things that might not seem that they're a big deal are going to be a big deal. Like, does that kind of come to play as well? Like how hypersensitive instantly everyone becomes that's part of this kind of storyline of the show. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting balance. And I know specifically from my perspective coming out as an actor, um, a balance of things that you have to accept Mm -hmm. as that character that you are going to deal with because of the heightened situation. And then what are the things that this character is going to find more annoyance in being yeah. in this situation? What yeah. is the thing that's going to set them off, you know? And, it, and it, in this situation- So you know where was, I'm coming from, right? Things are gonna set you guys off right away. Well, it, yeah. was like, it, was like, it was like Flex in yeah. episode four, right? And for anyone seeing that, like we, we go really in depth as to why this one thing has just built up. And you know, it's something that Travis has accepted for years yeah and then now we're here and it's like absolutely not snaps and so there's you know sir each character definitely had their own thing that they had to boiling points yeah set off what what was their boiling point their breaking point and and so i think i think you see that in a lot of different characters everyone kind of has their own thing i think you know we have this one with mari between mari and jackie at one point and and you had you know you have you have Jane's just just came through and, and just there's so many so many different places. But it is interesting because all these characters are in a community that, like you just said, and I love the word you use, they have to be a part of this community. Yes. Almost. There's no choice. It is survival. It yeah. isn't it isn't like, hey, we're all at summer camp. No, no, this is you can't leave. You have nowhere to go. And so that kind of forces you to accept things that you don't want to accept. And some characters the- really don't want to be part of the community. No. <laughs> There's some characters that really don't want to be a part of anything. And, yeah. Uh, and yeah, and even unlikely relationships, like you're saying, like, I don't know if Travis and Natalie ever connect Yeah. if they're not here. Yeah. And that's, and that's something that, and look at that, you know, 25 years in the future, we see that that connection. But I feel like they both kind of have commonalities with like the hidden demons a little bit. They're both, they both, do you know what I mean by that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. And I think, honestly, you know, you think about episode four, and if they're not put in that situation where they're together and only together, yep. who knows if they ever feel vulnerable enough to open up about those kinds of things. So mm-hmm. it's just been really beautiful to see how this story overall has created situations in which people form mm-hmm. relationships because it's all they have. Absolutely. Um, you're obviously in a show now that Obviously, well, tra- your your scenes and your storyline are part of a flashback. Flashbacks have been used all the time in a lot of shows. It's obviously very prominent in this show. I'm just curious, kind of as an actor and a storyteller, you would bring it up about Yellow Jackets. Right? What do you kind of think about how the flashback is being used in TV and film these days? Oh, um, sometimes it is used just horrifically but in this you know some genres and and some shows including ours i feel 
adds so much more layer to a character mm -hmm. because of it. And I think great storytelling can happen with flashbacks. And I think a huge, um, you know, a huge way to see that in our show is look at Shauna. Yeah. And, and Shauna, the way Melanie carries herself, um, is spectacular. But if we don't see what she's been going through, we don't under we don't understand why she's acting. The that's way she's a great storyline. That whole so that yeah. storyline. It's really interesting to see how she's growing as a person. One hundred percent. It yeah. Did you is do you have like beside I don't know. I mean, they're all great, right? But like besides, you know, the Travis Natalie. Like, do you have a a storyline that you're really enjoying on the show compared to others? Or oh, I'm, I'm it's all good. I'm, absolutely addicted to all of them yeah like absolutely i just you know even when we are just reading them forget when i'm watching them and it's been a totally new experience watching them which has been really spectacular and you know even with natalie and travis for instance mm -hmm. i spent six months really liking the character i was playing like yeah. in the sense of like because i was i was trying to be as honest as i could to uh his demons That's, and his yeah. and his his story and and championing him because as an actor you have to champion you know, their decision making and, and justify that. And so I spent six months yeah. championing this this person and then now watching it, I'm a viewer and it's a totally different experience. I think episode two, I'm watching going, what the heck are you doing? I'm, <laughs> I'm watching just absolutely infuriated with people. So it's definitely been a beautiful experience to, you know, just see such talented uh, performers put together a story, but now have a totally different point of view watching the show. I have a completely different point of view as a viewer now. Do you think there's still an overall misconception in the entertainment industry that like people, cause sometimes it's voluntary or sometimes it's not voluntary. Like they just don't have time or access to it. But is there a misconception that people like get to watch their stuff? Because I'm noticing more and more now that like, I always have to check before I do interviews because like you, you can't assume anymore. I feel like. <laughs> no, I think, I think it's a personal I think it's a personal choice with a production or yeah. with uh, an actor as well. You know, there are some actors that don't want to watch their um, their footage at all yeah. because they want to just have that experience. And so, um, for me, I'm trying to learn as much as I can. So I've been I've been really eager to watch everything because I yes. just want to keep growing and keep growing. As that's interesting, guy. using it kind of a yeah, absolutely as like a training yeah. almost too. You know, I yeah, I believe that you know I'm 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 at the tip. I'm at the tip of what I want to be working on and continuously mm -hmm. working on. And this show has really helped me continue to grow as a performer and working with the directors that we got to work with was amazing experience for me. And, and I've, I, you know, trying to do the best job that I possibly can and to bring mm -hmm. that going into future seasons, I think it's really important that I want to watch and, and try and continuously find ways to bring more depth and more, understanding to this character absolutely before we wrap up obviously we do we do have to acknowledge uh lock and key uh javi on lock and key uh hmm. season two dropped recently um what was that like in terms of when it finally came out because i know that was a long time coming i know you guys shot that and everything and then you're kind of playing the waiting game in terms of when they're going to announce it and you know so i'm just curious that my question for that is like what when did like what what did it feel like when it was finally out there and people kind of knew what happened with all your characters for that show. For me specifically, I was relieved because, yeah. you know, big spoiler with Javi and, um, mm -hmm. you know, waiting for people to finally kind of find out what Which I knew like a long time ago, by the way, but I never yeah. told you. Sorry. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there was that that I was really eager just for everyone to find out. But I think the bigger part was we were so lucky to work safely in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of got to really bond through that time. And so just getting to see that work finally come to fruition, and, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was, you recurred it was a on a new talk show. Yeah. I recurred on a new talk show with Jesse Camacho on set with Jesse Camacho hosted by Jesse Camacho. Um, and uh, <laughs> trying to get Griffin Gluck to be a musical guest every week. Um, oh, so good. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was, it was a lot of fun and uh, no, I, and that whole cast on Lock and Key is spectacular. So, you know, it was so nice to bring the experience of Lock and Key to Yellow Jackets. Yep. And continuously, again, it's all, I, I really do believe it's all about growing, but I I really think everyone I okay, spoiler, I just finished watching seven to ten mm -hmm. yesterday. 
<laughs> but why do you gotta do that though? Like why like why do you gotta do that to I me just, right now? I just finished it and oh man. And like I needed to. Once I heard Melanie and watched it, I was like, oh my goodness, I need to know what happens. See, so, it's funny because there were some shows that I got screeners for. Yellow Jack is not one of them because I have to wait like every like I have to wait every week. But there's a lot yeah. of shows that I've gotten screeners before and I'm interviewing like the person who's on the show and they haven't seen it at all. And they're like losing their minds because I've seen all 10 episodes. They're like, what? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've been so fortunate to get to, to, get to see this. I, I'm just impatient. So I've been mm -hmm. bugging people. Um, and so yeah. we finally got to see it. I, and I really, uh, I'm so excited for everyone to see what's <sighs> coming. Like, I'm so excited. And, uh, I'm so, and, yeah, and yeah, you know, for everyone who hasn't, who hasn't got to see it yet, this the episode that we just aired was with uh, Billy Woodruff, who directed Honey. And and Billy is awesome, and I love this episode so much. So I can't wait for. I'm I'm just excited that everyone's finally getting to watch this one. But there's just you know there's four more episodes of just huh, just spectacular stuff coming. I'm so excited, Kevin. I wanted to thank you so much for coming back on the show. Um, and seriously, man, uh, I'm really happy for you, man. It's awesome to see. You, seriously. Nah, I really appreciate. it. I'm happy for you too, and uh, and yeah, I just um, I'm very excited for everyone to see this, and uh, and then we'll be back season two. Yeah, which is amazing. People can follow you. You're on Twitter and Instagram, right? They can. They can well, I'm, yeah, I'm on the Twitter and Instagram. Haven't quite hopped on the TikTok train yet, but you know, we're we're on the way. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. You can be, of course, able to catch Kevin Alves as Travis in Showtime's Yellow Jackets. Until next time, this is Kevin and PD Beats. Signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.